Okay, I had a few guys ask me about the uh, bomb drop system on here, so instead of taking pictures, I just thought I'd do a little video real quick and doing some more weathering. There's a picture of the HK bomb drop in the same location that they have the pylon for the uh, stock drop tanks. It's a little bigger and bulkier, but if you just remove that foam pylon piece, this thing just actually is just glued right to the bottom of the wing, and the wires are run right down the same channel there. You like to pull the tape and then put it back down as on there. I've also modified, uh, it comes with this special plate right here with when you get one of those, so you can add extra things to it. I did have to put a couple pieces of foam to jack it up so that the bombs would sit at the same parallel on the wing otherwise they sit at a different angle uh, that was a real easy two minute glue on job there but that way I can still put these on there and they're rock solid I'll flip the airplane over here in a minute and you guys can take a look at it see if I can get a little closer here we'll swing the airplane around from the side view but anyway there it is And then I'll flip it over and actually show you how it is. I've actually got it on right now, but two of them, and I've just got them hooked to a wide channel to one channel, so they both come off, off simultaneously. <coughs> Works flawless. All you need is a spare channel, and off you go. I've actually got a pair of these on a, believe it or not, a 1400 millimeter uh, Stutka. Works like a champ. A little big, but nice and you can see it. Let me put the camera down and flip the plane over. Okay, there. There it is upside down. Whoops. Bomb on one wing. I left the other one off here, you can see. There it is. I painted them black because they're sitting in the... I put them in the stripe. Added some foam down here a little closer. Added some little foam weathering strips right here. It actually kind of puts pressure on the uh, bomb so it doesn't wiggle around. And it just snaps right on. That way there's little to no free play with it when it's flying around. If you leave it, if you don't put something right there, they kind of wiggle just a little bit. Just didn't want that in the air. So, easy fix. Just a couple pieces of foam to kind of take up the tension and help them ride there. Open these gear back up and show them again. Remember, I'm using the sequencer here. I wrote earlier, these little micro switches that you see down inside here, on this particular one, this switch right here, when I'm activating the retracts, it does nothing. When I click it, it doesn't stop the gear at all. The other one does. If the gear is actuating and I, and I hit that switch, it'll actually stop that retract from moving. Uh, this one doesn't seem to be doing anything. I've also noticed that when the gear are actually fully uh, retracted, that they actually don't make contact with this switch. You can actually put pressure down on the gear and you can hear it contacting that switch and clicking it so it's not actually engaging it when it's fully retracted. So I think those are just set up for a safety feature for over travel. Though I have to look into this one because right now when I click that switch it won't stop this retract from moving. Um, it'll, keep, it'll keep going. The other one will actually stop but I'm still having good luck with my retracts. They haven't burned up yet, so I'm knocking on wood. Wherever there's wood at. Here. Knock on my noggin. That's wood. Okay. But there's the scale size of the bomb to the wing. I'll take it off here. Let it release. And I can actually go back with what I've done with the 
little spare mount when you buy the system it comes with a spare mount for each one and I just modify the drop tank so I can put the which I like I like this the drops back on there and I can actually drop them if I want uh, they're easy to make you guys can actually once you see it if you've seen a pair of them you fabricate your one and put all kind of stuff on there I actually have a pair of uh, drop tanks with smoke in them from the LX MIG that I haven't used up yet and I'm gonna put them on this airplane and uh, I've got igniters the plug is taped up next to the connector there and I can actually fly it and light them off with smoke trail there's mine I've been doing just about finished up with my weathering and detail and airbrushing I did all the panel lines and stuff last night you can kind of see darken them in there I use smoke Tamiya smoke it's an acrylic good stuff here it is right here use it unthinned in an airbrush it works great because it's a translucent paint and that's how I get those effects on the exhaust on all my airplanes and stuff like that it works really well and and the, and works real good for the exhaust on the jets uh, too let's see if I can get over here and show you a couple of the jets that are still sitting here there's an example of the ERC F18 using the smoke sprayed silver and just spray it, spray it at the tip and let the overspray build up and you get that real blended burnt effect and it kind of goes on a goldish brown. Uh, where's another one here? Here's the ERCs. Same thing. They didn't quite come out as good there, but it's real. Th it's uh, it's a water-based paint, so you have to spray it on, kind of let it tack up and dry. Otherwise, it will run. I used it for all the panel lines and smudges on the uh, A1 Sky Raider too. It's a great little detail feature. And then you can kind of go back over the outside edges of it right here with real flat with flat black real thin and that kind of adds an accent to it as well. It does go on very very glossy so after it's all dried it's a good idea to take some like Krylon flat and spray over it which will dull it out or since most of most all of the FMS Warbirds are actually done in a uh, kind of a matte semi-gloss finish if you use where's the jar of it at here TS TS 79 Tamiya for plastics this is a semi-gloss if you spray your color on this after it dries spray this over the top of it right here it'll actually the finish will be about the same texture and take the flat off. If you know if you spray flats over gloss it kind of looks like it's a different color it's just because of the texture uh, vice versa spray gloss it looks like it's a darker green and it's actually not they'll actually blend real well. I noticed that when I was actually doing that uh, you'll see it there kind of in the background that FMS B25 sitting next under behind that LX Corsair same thing matching up the greens uh, that's pretty much the retracts. You noticed I've painted my retract wells inside green. I even did the smoke weathering on the uh, inside of the doors, you'll see. But stuff like these panel lines. Now this I painted with the brush, kind of thinned down, and went over it several times. But that's what the smoke will make it look like instead of like using the pencil trick and the graphite or something like that. This is another way to do it, a little more permanent. You don't have to spray over it. And the glossy inside the panel lines actually looks real good against the flat finish. It uh, adds a sheen to it. You can see on the wing, it doesn't take much at all. Like I said, airbrush or by hand paint, it works really well. The blended, like that, right in through here, airbrush. And I'll get a little closer here. You'll actually notice the exhaust stacks are painted. Let me find my finger here. I paint these rust and then I come back over it and I spray the tip with that um, smoke and then it blends and it looks like it's all blended rusty pipes blended out, out at the end and then I, after it's all dried I sprayed the whole thing with flat that's why it looks flat originally it was real glossy but then once it's sprayed flat you get that that look right there where it's rust and then burnt at the tips 
and then the, the fade out down the bottom and that's just taking the airbrush and making a sweeping motion and watching your consistency until you get the right look that you're looking for which is kind of blended. Same thing I did here on the uh, FMS P40. And then you'll see, kind of see the stacks. They're done the same way. They're actually painted. Yeah. Zoom back out here. They're actually painted a rust back here, and then they, they're black at the tips. But all I did was spray right at the tip here and let the overspray build up until it, it blended. Because I still wanted to be able to see the rust at the back of the stack. By the way, guys, that is a real hard airplane to fly. Tony wasn't kidding when he was talking about it in his review. I almost lost that one when I maimed it here a while back. Real sensitive on the elevator and ailerons. It doesn't need much throw at all. And it is fast on that uh, three-bladed stock prop. It's the fastest of the FMS course, of the FMS 1400 millimeter series. Pretty quick and very agile. It's not very forgiving. But it flies good. I'm eager to get this one out and fly it. But there's the HK bomb drop system that I think is nine bucks. I actually have four of them. There's one of them over there on the center line of that um, Stuka die bomber, which is what I originally put it on to check it out. Works great. And I have one on the center line on the uh, A1 Skyrider there that Pete uh, sent me from Banana Hobbies. Another good flying airplane. Uh, needs a better set of retracts, but overall airplane is actually fabulous. Flies really well. Should be about like this one. Hope this helps, guys. Uh, I've been watching everything, and I'm following real closely on this retract issue. Oh, one more thing. I did have an issue with my stock tailwheel retract, which was actually a little more than I thought it was. And this is what I did. I'll show pictures of it. This is actually a replacement V6 1400 millimeter retract unit. All I did was change out the strut, the whole strut, including the C-clips, because the two C-clips between the two don't fit each other. And I put this strut assembly, which is the stock strut assembly for this airplane, into the trunnion on this retract unit, okay, which is a little bigger. You do have to, there's a piece of plastic right underneath this piece, because the other PTZ unit is a shallower, that you need to break off so that this will sit down in there but it'll actually drop right in once that's dropped off. Plus the stock servo, which I still have, and you have to kind of modify and grind this arm down just a little bit so that the steering arms line up, because this sits a little lower. But that's how I replaced my retract unit. The uh, two little cutoff switches that are in the other one, it wasn't making contact, which is what was stopping it from retract. I thought it was burned out, but it's actually not. I could put it back in there. But uh, I would need to get me another steering arm. i got to find another one of these steering arms that goes on the servos. And then I've, I could go back to using that unit. But you can swap out the strut assembly here uh, with the steering arm and what have you. And uh, have a new retract unit. Like I said, this is one for a 1400 millimeter uh, V6 Mustang. And Marie, as a matter of fact, that I've got. And it worked perfect for this airplane. Tailwheel sits in the same area. I also don't have any problems with this one stuttering and not wanting to retract or not want to come down. It's positive up and down every single time. All right, I'll try and get this video up again. One last shot of the bomb there that they were asking me about. That's the size on the wing. It is perfect. It's almost the exact same size as the drop tank. A word to wise on these bombs though, when you drop them, they're not, they're kind of a nylon plastic mix. They tend to break right here. Um, one of the old ones here that I've got. I actually took some of that rubber cement they use for, they send with the kits, and I glued this note, this rubber nose coat on and split it in half. So that when I take the bomb apart, but, and this one may show it here, these little tabs right here that hold the bomb together will tend to break after the first couple drops and it will start to split and crack right in here from a drop as well. I think the other one is, is actually split and broke. Yeah, I'm actually using a rubber band to hold it together. Let's see here. 
see if we can get it apart and see if I can show you. But I just use rubber band or some tape on it. Two pieces of tape real quick and it'll still, yeah, you can see pieces that are busting out of there. Even with that foam rubber cone on it, it'll it'll break. They're, they don't stand up real well, but you can buy replacements. And I advise if you're going to get some of these, probably buy like two or three replacement bombs. Because I don't think these bombs, even though as nice as they, are, they look and are, they need to be built with something a little more durable and vinyl that'll that'll withstand impact uh, on the ground. And I've actually been dropping them on the grass and they're breaking. I haven't even hit concrete with them yet. I can just imagine what if I hit the concrete tarmac with them, they'd probably blister all to pieces. But that's them right there. They work real well. They're a good size for these 1700mm uh, birds. They would work real good for the jug as well. And if I ever get that plane, I'll do the same thing. I've actually got two more of them I'm going to do, and they're going on that LX Corsair right there. As soon as Pete sends me the retracts that uh, he promised me, then I'll have that plane up and flying. Uh, they sent me a retract unit to replace the original ones, and the one that they sent me was broke, so I'm still waiting on retracts. Not real happy about it, and I haven't got any answers back to my emails yet, except that I'm going to. Well, I'm still waiting. Thanks a lot. I'll see you guys later. Bye.